In today's video, we're going to be looking at how do we take integrals of more complicated functions. Well, based off of 4.3, right? 4.3 was the fundamental theorem of calculus where we learned that in order to calculate an integral, you need to know the antiderivative. And so finding the integral of a more complicated function really means how do I find the antiderivative of more complicated functions? Okay. Well, let's just, just, just to start out, I want to review the simple antiderivatives we already know. Okay. If you want the antiderivative of u to the p power, okay, du, um, my power rule says I'm going to add one to the exponent and divide by that new exponent. Okay, and of course, plus c. Now, you might be wondering, why did I choose to use u? Well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But remember, variables are interchangeable, right? As long as, as long as I'm taking the integral in terms of u, the rule st stays exactly the same. It doesn't change what the rule is. Okay. So with that in mind, let's talk about some other ones. If I have e to the u, du, what's my antiderivative? Well, you remember e to the x or e to the u is that special function to where it just stays the same. So I get e to the u plus e. Okay, and then last but not least, uh, what if you have just one over u, do you? Remember, that's the special case where you end up with an, uh, I don't know why I put a plus sign, you end up with a natural log of u. Okay. So there's a quick little review of the basic antiderivative rules that we know for my basic functions. But what about more complicated functions? Well, there's a reason I chose u, because a lot of the times we use u to represent a function in itself, right? So, for example, consider this problem. What if I had 3x plus 4 raised to the 7th power? How does this relate to what we're, what I just barely talked about? Well, uh, we have a function inside of another function, right? We have 3x plus 4 inside of this power function because it's raised to the seventh power. So could I not say, well, let's let u equal 3x plus 4. And if I do that, notice what I'm left with. I'm left with this integral of u to the seventh. Which, ah, wait, oh, that means I can just use the power rule. But here's the issue. Here's what makes it just slightly more complicated than normal. Is I'm left with u to the 7th times dx. So I'm not actually taking the integral in terms of u. I'm taking the integral in terms of dx. So how do we compensate this? This integral is theoretically not very complicated as long as we can get as long as we can switch this dx to du. If we can get that in terms of du, then everything's in terms of u, and I can take the integral using one of these simple antiderivative formulas. But how do I do that? Well, I can actually do that using differentials. So I'm going to do that over here. Um, uh, if I know that u is equal to 3x plus 4, then the derivative of that is really simple to calculate. du over dx is just... 3. Well, then using this concept of differentials, I can move the dx over to the other side, and I'm left with du equals 3 dx. Aha! So what that allows me to do is that allows me to put du in terms of dx, or dx in terms of du. I can divide by 3, and I get dx is equal to du divided by 3. Perfect. So what that allows me to do is now I can come back here and replace this for dx. And I'm left with the integral of u to the 7th times du over 3. I now have an extra constant in here, but that's fine. I can handle constants. 
What did we say about constants? Do they affect my antiderivative? No. In fact, you can just, I can move that constant all the way out in front of my antiderivative. And I get one third times the integral of u to the seventh times du. That's now a very simple antiderivative for me to calculate. And so I can do just that. I have one third times u to the eighth over eight plus c. I, of course, don't want to leave this in terms of u, so to finish this problem off, I, I can go ahead and distribute the one-third, and I get u to the eighth over 24, but what is u again? u is equal to 3x plus 4. So I get 3x plus 4 raised to the eighth over 24. 24 is just 3 times 8 plus c. Remember, I don't need to distribute the one-third to the c because c is just an arbitrary constant. And there's my antiderivative. So this is this idea of integration by substitution. Is if you have a function inside of another function, you can use a substitution to maybe get it in terms of one of these more simpler uh, functions that I know the antiderivatives for. Okay. Let's look at another example. Consider this one. Oh, sorry, no, dx, sorry. Ooh. E, the integral of e to the 4x squared dx. Okay. Now, once again, definitely a more complicated type function because I have a function inside of another function. In this case, u is equal to whatever's up in that exponent. Okay, so the idea behind integration by substitution is let's go ahead and substitute u for this inside function to see if we can come up with a more simple antiderivative to take. Well, when I do that, I get e to the u dx. And now remember, I can't take this antiderivative if I have two different variables. So I have to get dx in terms of du. To do that, I use my differentials, which really just means I'm going to take the derivative of this. right? So it turns out that du is equal to 8x, which is the derivative of 4x squared, times dx. And then, because I was able to do that, I can now solve for dx in terms of du. I can now solve for this value using this equation. And I get dx is equal to, I'm just gonna divide 8x on both sides, so I get du over 8x. Okay, very nice. So I'm left with the integral of e to the u, du over 8x. Do we see a problem? Hopefully we see a problem. What's my problem? I still have an x in my integral. I cannot take this antiderivative if my function is still in terms of two different variables. I can't do it. So it turns out some of these functions, some functions, integration by substitution is not going to be effective for. Okay. For some functions, you can't actually use integration by substitution. Okay. Okay, so just keep this in mind when you're using integration by substitution. Using integration by substitution requires functions to be in a specific form. And what is that form, you might ask? Okay, so we just saw an example where it's not in that form, and therefore I cannot use integration by substitution for this example. Okay, cannot use integration by substitution. In fact, this is, this is an integral that we have to rely on computers 
that can do estimations. Um, we can't integrate this one by hand. So integration substitution requires functions to be in a specific form. What is that specific form? Well, let's go back to the very beginning. If I look at this function and think about going the other direction, how would I take the derivative? What would you use? You'd use the chain rule. Same with this function, right? Would you use the chain rule to take that derivative? So it turns out that this specific form that we're looking for is related to the chain rule. But because we're going backwards, this specific form that we're looking for is, um, if we write it in, let's go ahead and write this in uh, function notation, okay? So I need my function to be in a form similar to this. Right? If it's in that form, that, that should look familiar because that's kind of what you end up with with chain rule. If, if my function's in this form, then I can use the chain rule moving backwards to get my actual function. Okay? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for, actually, since, since this is going to be my function that I find the antiderivative of, I don't necessarily need it to be a derivative. But the important piece is whatever that inside function is, you need the derivative of it on the outside. You need the derivative of it being multiplied on the outside. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's take the integral of 2x dx over 1 plus x squared to the fifth. Okay. If this confuses you, remember, you can always just rewrite this as 2x over 1 plus x squared to the fifth, and then have the dx over here. Either one works. Just recognize that dx belongs in the numerator. Okay. Okay, so why is this a prime candidate for integration by substitution? Because I see an inside function. Right? I can go ahead and say, oh, well, we might want to let u equal 1 plus x squared. Okay. Uh, so let's see what that gives us. That leaves me with 2x over u to the fifth dx. Of course, I still have my two different variables. So let's see if I can get it all in terms of u. How do I do that? Well, my... my my prime target is this dx. I need to get dx in terms of du, which I can do using my differential. So du is equal to, I'm just going to take the derivative of this piece. Derivative of 1 plus x squared is just 2x. And then that's going to be multiplied by dx. Okay. So it turns out that du is equal to 2x dx. I can solve for dx. And I get dx is equal to du over 2x. Kind of similar to the one that we looked at up here. Okay, So my, my dx involves the 2x in there. Okay. Well, I can go ahead and resubstitute here. And I get 2x times u to the fifth times, what is dx? dx is du over 2x. What do we notice? So this is actually what you're looking for with integration by substitution. What do I notice? I notice that uh, this 2x that was part of my dx cancels out with something that was already present in my function. My function had a 2x in the numerator, which is perfect because it cancels out with that 2x that I get in my differential. And that's good because now I'm left with an integral that's completely in terms of u. And in order to help me take the antiderivative, I'm going to rewrite this as a power function. Okay, So now I can take the antiderivative. The antiderivative of this is I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number. So I get u to the negative fourth over negative 4 plus c. 
If I clean this up a little bit, I get negative one over four u to the fourth. And of course I want this back in terms of x. Um, and so I get negative one over four times one, what is that, one minus x squared, one plus x squared raised to the fourth power, plus c. Very nice. So once again, that's what you're looking for with integration by substitution, is you're looking for everything to cancel out nicely so that you end up with an integral that's completely in terms of u. Okay. We could also see this back at this step. Notice du is equal to 2x dx, and what do you see in the numerator? A 2x dx, which means I could go ahead and just replace that with du if I wanted to. Okay, well, last thing we need to talk about is what do we do if I have bounds? Okay, next let's look at this, this, this example. You'll notice that now I'm working with a definite integral with bounds. I can still use integration by substitution um, even if I have bounds because as the fundamental theorem of calculus states, if I want to find the definite integral, I still need to find the antiderivative. Uh, and that's what's going to make it possible for me. So I'm going to start this in the same exact way. Why might I use integration by substitution? Because sure enough, I have an inside function here. So I'm going to go ahead and let u equal x squared plus 1. Okay. Um, of course, I know I'm going to need to uh, adjust the dx. So I'm going to go ahead and find my differential. So du, I'm just going to take the derivative of this function and I get 2x. So du is equal to 2x dx. Uh, it looks kind of similar to what we just looked at, uh, but uh, there's going to be a, a few differences here. So um, now, and then, sorry, and then of course, the reason why I did this is to figure out what dx is equal to in terms of du. So I get dx is equal to du over 2x. So let's go ahead and look and see what happens here. I still have an 11x out here, cube root of, well, that whole thing is now u, right? x squared plus 1 is equal to u, and dx is equal to du over 2x. Does anything cancel? Sure enough, the x's cancel. And that's exactly what we want, right? We want everything in terms of u. Now, for some of my more observant folks, you might be thinking, but wait a second, last time it matched exactly, right? I had a 2x dx in my function, and du was equal to 2x dx, so they matched exactly. But in this case, it doesn't match exactly, because here I have an 11x, but my du was a 2x. Is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. As long as, what's important here? What's important is that all of your x's cancel out. If the constants are different, that's okay. We can deal with constants. Uh, sorry, and I missed something here. This should be 11 over two. Um, but as long as your x variable cancels out, you can use integration by substitution just fine. Okay, so this is where we end up with. We have the integral uh, from zero to negative, or zero to square root of 26 of 11 over two cube root of u du. Now, speaking of those observant folks, has anybody observed something off here? What have I done? I have created an integral that's in completely in terms of u, but I messed up. There's still something that's in terms of x. What's still in terms of x here? It turns out that the bounds are still in terms of x. They're both still x values. So I haven't technically gotten this completely in terms of u. I still have things that are in terms of x. How do I get this in terms of u? 
I can plug these x values into my u function. So if I do that, notice what I get. I get u, let's start with square root of 26. I get u is equal to square root of 26 squared plus 1. Square root of 26 squared is 26. 26 plus 1 is 27. So what that does is that converts my x value into a u value. It gives my corresponding u value for that specific x value. I'll do the same thing for 0. If I plug in 0, I get 0 squared plus 1, so u is just equal to 1. So it's my corresponding u value sorry, for that x value. Right? And you can see that by, like, if I come back here, if I plug in 0 into my function, I'm going to end up with a cube root of 1, right? 0 squared plus 1, I end up with a cube root of 1. If I plug in square root of 26 into my function, I get, I end up with a cube root of 27, right? Which is exactly what should be happening here. So, if you have bounds, make sure you adjust your bounds so that they're in terms of u. Okay. Um, now that I've done that, sorry, let me go ahead and write out my function. Right. I can go ahead and take the antiderivative. Now, I forgot, this is a cube root, so I actually will probably want to write this as a power function. Cube root of x, or cube root of u, is just u to the one-third. Now I'm good to go. Okay, I'm good to go ahead and find my antiderivative formula. Um, I, of course, I, I still have this constant here. And remember, if you have a constant, you can just move it out in front of your integral. So if I just keep going, I have 11 over 2, this integral from 1 to 27 of u to the 1 3rd d. So what does that give me? This gives me 11 over 2. What's my antiderivative of u to the 1 3rd? I get u to the 4 thirds divided by 4 thirds. Well, if you divide by a fraction, you can just flip and multiply. So I get times by 3 fourths. Right, that's multiplying by the reciprocal. Instead of dividing by 4 thirds, I'm multiplying by 3 fourths. Hopefully everybody is okay with that. But of course, that's bounded from 1 to 27. I still have to evaluate that from 1 to 27. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and plug in 27, see what I get. I get 11 over 2. Let me erase that. I get 11 over 2. And when I plug in 27, let's see, 27, the cube root of 27 is 3, but then 3 to the 4th is 81. So I get 3 fourths times 81. Minus what happens when I plug in 1? 1 to the 4 thirds is just 1. Did not mean to change that to red. And so I just end up with 3 fourths. Okay, so that's with 27 plugged in, and that's with 1 plugged in. Okay. And what do I end up with? If I, if I distribute, if I now distribute this 11 over 2... I end up with 33 over 8 times 81 minus 33 over 8, which when you do the math there, uh, you end up getting 330. Okay. So you'll notice that after I took the antiderivative, did I need to switch everything back to terms of x? I did not. And the reason why is because my bounds, these bounds, are now in terms of u. And so because they're in terms of u, I don't have to put everything back in terms of x. My answer should be a just a, just a value like this anyway. So that all that work of putting it all back in terms of x is unnecessary. You can go ahead and just plug your bounds in terms of u and get your answer from there. Okay, best of luck in this section. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'm happy to help you.
Um, have a great day.